One of the most misunderstood aspects of our industry involves the distinction between qualification and certification in relation to NDT technicians. It's very important that employers who oversee the training of NDT trainees understand this process and more importantly make the commitment to that training out of an understanding that the performance of that trainee will someday affect the health and safety of human beings. Let's take a look at the entire certification process to help determine the correct path that each technician should take. First, let's consider the document that covers this process. The American Society of Non-Destructive Testing, ASNT, has created a document that functions as a guideline for the qualification and certification process. This document is referred to as SNT TC1A. Here's an overview of the requirements for qualification as outlined in this document. The qualification process includes four distinct requirements. First, formal education in the NDT method under study, referred to as body of knowledge. Second, successful completion of a test set for each method, referred to as general, specific, and practical tests. Third, an eye test consisting of near vision acuity and color differentiation examinations. Four, documentation of time and method for each NDT method where certification is being sought. Accumulation of documented on-the-job training under the supervision of a level two or three technician. The time per method should be specified in the employer's written practice. These four elements combined fulfill the requirements for qualification in each method of NDT inspection named in the ASNT recommended practice, SNT TC1A. The question comes often, who's responsible for certification? What needs to be understood at this time is that the company who employs the NDT technician is the entity responsible for certifying the technician in the chosen method of inspection. Schools and training centers cannot certify technicians. One exception would be in the case where an experienced technician with documented on-the-job training and other records of qualification would choose to form his own company and adopt our Level 3 to write a written practice for his company, verify his qualification, and then certify him under his own company written practice. Training centers like ours, NDT Training and Testing Center, can help technicians and employers fulfill three of the four steps. But the important on-the-job training under the level two or three technician must be provided by the employer. When the critical on-the-job training is completed, the trainee is ready for his certification. A simple statement of belief by a supervisor or officer of the company that the trainee has successfully accomplished the path of qualification and is now certified for the inspection task for which he was trained. Let's take a look at an example of qualification and certification procedures. This is Joe. Joe would like to become a certified level 2 inspector using the magnetic particle method of inspection. Step 1. Joe attends the Level 1 and 2 Magnetic Particle class at NDT Training and Testing Center, fulfilling the body of knowledge requirements of SNT TC1A. Step 2. At the end of the class, Joe is given written tests covering general and specific information about magnetic particle inspection techniques and equipment. Joe is also given a hands-on practical test to show that he can actually use the equipment to conduct magnetic particle inspection. Joe passes all three tests with flying colors. Step 3. Joe passes an eye test administered by the NDT Training and Testing Center. Now Joe has fulfilled three of the recommendations of SNT TC1A for becoming qualified for certification to Level 2 status. Joe receives a certificate of completion from NDT Training and Testing Center, but he is not yet a certified technician. Remember, there is one more requirement to fulfill. Step 4. 
Joe and his employer keep track of how much time Joe actually spends practicing and performing magnetic particle inspection under the direction of a qualified level 2 or 3. Once Joe has completed the appropriate number of hours of magnetic particle inspection, then he will have fulfilled the time and method or on-the-job training recommendations of SNT-TC-1A. Joe's employer can now certify that Joe has completed all of the requirements and Joe will receive his level 2 certification for magnetic particle inspection. This is the process for proper certification in each method of NDT inspection. If you have further questions or would like to know more about the qualification and certification process, please give us a call at NDT Training and Testing Center.